Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson eight and nine. Uh, I've combined them together just because they are not necessarily very long each and of themselves, especially lesson nine. It is only, I think, one slide and then there's an assignment for you to do. So uh, I decided to combine them. Um, the first uh, lesson, lesson eight, is about fertilization, external and internal fertilization. Uh, and the uh, next lesson, lesson nine, is about the pros and cons of sexual reproduction. It follows from our advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction that we worked on a couple of lessons ago. So let's get right into it here. Methods of fertilization. There is external fertilization and internal fertilization. As you can see above me, it is the key points one and two. Now, external fertilization is when a sperm cell and an egg cell unite outside the bodies of the parents. So there is not uh, a mother carrying um, the offspring. They are outside the body. The sperm and the egg cell meet outside of the body. Uh, some examples of this might be fish, mosses, ferns, um, and there's also others. We are going to discuss a few of these in detail as well as some changes that can occur in some of these different uh, organisms. So how do mosses reproduce? The male and female organs develop on the ends, uh, end of the stems or branches of the plant. And you can see that in the diagram that is in your notes next, and I'll flip to right here. You have the same plant, um, at the top and the bottom and they both produce male gametes and female gametes that would be sperm and egg uh, in the moss life cycle male gametes and female gametes they then uh, meet outside of the body uh, and create a new plant so fertilization cannot occur without water often it is a splash from the rain um, that transfers the male gametes to the female gametes or water might rush by the mosses and mix them. The sperm cells produced by the moss either swim across the damp ground or are splashed by raindrops into female parts of the plant. Fertilization then results in a new plant and that is how mosses spread. Uh, so two different gametes from the exact same plant can uh, actually come together to produce a new plant. It is still sexual reproduction because you have a male gamete and a female gamete coming together. Um, the other type that you can have is internal fertilization. That is the type that humans have um, and many, many other different animals as well as insects. So we're gonna talk about humans later on. Um, we're going to focus for now on insects and how they change. So internal fertilization is when the sperm cells are deposited inside the female's body where they meet an egg. So it's not as random outside of the body. It is specific to this male and this female inside uh, the female's body. Um, and then after those two gametes meet together, a process called metamorphosis um, occurs, especially in insects, which is a change in the form of an insect as it matures, and essentially as it grows up. So there's two different types, and again, I believe you can see that in your notes. There's um, incomplete and complete metamorphosis. So we're gonna start with incomplete. Uh, incomplete metamorphosis involves very subtle changes throughout the life cycle stages. So from an egg, to a nymph, to an adult might be an example. As you can see um, from the diagram, we have uh, the egg laying by the mother. It comes out as a nymph or an, a young um, grasshopper, and it then transforms into an adult with wings eventually. Uh, that is an incomplete metamorphosis because it does not completely change form. It is always looking very very similar. Uh, these changes are mostly due to growing. The nymph is immature and looks like a smaller version of the adult. Uh, the nymph is usually wingless and unable to reproduce while the adult has wings and is able to reproduce. The nymph has to molt, uh, shed its exoskeleton, it sheds its outside essentially in order to grow wings and to develop 
reproductive organs. So uh, even though there are changes uh, in the body throughout the life cycle of the insect, it is not a complete change. If we think about humans, let's, we don't grow new appendages or wings or anything like that as we grow into an adult. Uh, there's nothing different about us. So humans or dogs or cats do not undergo metamorphosis. Uh, again, if you need to pause here and copy some of that down, go back and listen again, definitely do that. Uh, but sexual reproduction has external and internal fertilization. Uh, mosses, fish are examples of external. Uh, insects, humans, dogs, cats, animals like that are uh, examples of internal fertilization. And then we talked about incomplete metamorphosis as it changes um, the look of an organism throughout its uh, life cycle. We're now going to talk about complete metamorphosis. So complete metamorphosis is a change in the form of an insect as it matures. It changes completely. The adult form of the insect is completely different from the larval stage. So generally it's four stages, the egg, larva, pupa, and adult stage. And I'm going to flip forward to the diagram, which I believe you have below um, to take a look at. So we start with an egg up top. Uh, it hatches and becomes a larva, which we know as a caterpillar often. It then uh, makes its cocoon, we call that a pupa, and it turns into a butterfly, something that is completely different from what we began with. Um, it is not just it shedding its skin and growing wings, uh, it actually needs to completely change its body makeup. It dissolves itself inside there and becomes something completely different. So the larva or uh, caterpillar is wingless and worm-like. Uh, its only job is to eat and to grow. After several moltings, the, lar the larva enters the pupa stage and energy reserves are used in reorganizing organs and developing new adult structures such as wings. So this is different um, because in grasshoppers, they kind of just grew the wings and after they shed their outer skin, they had them. Whereas in complete metamorphosis, the pupa actually dissolves different organs and reorganizes them and develops completely new structures and comes out as a completely different insect. Uh, the adult's main purpose or the butterfly's main purpose is to reproduce. Uh, in many species the adult really actually doesn't eat, just reproduces. That's its only function. So incomplete and complete metamorphosis are changes in an organism, but one changes completely how the organism looks and functions, the other one kind of adds features to them. We will move on to uh, the internal um, fertilization in plants. So sperm cells are deposited inside the female's body where they meet an egg, just as it was before. Um, but what we wanna look at is how flowering plants reproduce. So internal fertilization occurs through a process called pollination. So that's what we need bees for, or different insects to pollinate plants. It transfers the male gametes in the structures, uh, we call that pollen, um, to the female reproductive parts of a plant uh, that's from the stamen to the pistil. And we are going to go, or you are going to go much more into detail about what those are. Uh, after pollen lands on the pistil, on the female reproductive portion, the structures form to deliver the sperm cells down into the egg cell. So the sperm travels down this tube into the interior of the plant. And that's why we call this internal fertilization. It happens inside the female plant's body. Uh, a zygote forms and grows into an embryo and then is nourished by the food stored in the seed. Uh, the seed's outer covering protect the embryo. So once the flower is pollinated, it might turn into a tomato or it might turn into a bean, or uh, it might turn into essentially a seed that is able to be replanted. Uh, that is the benefit of pollination. So what I would like you to do uh, is find the answers by reading the paragraphs given in your notes um, and describe what the functions of um, the petal, stigma, style, stamen, sepal, ovary, and ovule are. There are sections for each um, place for you to write down what their functions are and to describe if they're used in the, in the reproduction functions of that plant. So a petal's job is to attract 
uh, insects to it. That's why they're different colors. Uh, pollen is the um, male gamete and it resides on uh, the style. So we need to think about the different functions and the different structures of the plant. So that's what your job will be to do, is to look up those different functions uh, and uh, write them down and come up with if they are uh, involved in reproduction or not. Um, after you're done that, well, we're going to move now on to lesson nine. So you can do this and then jump back in or continue on here. It is only, I believe, one slide for lesson nine. Uh, it is about the advantages and disadvantages of sexual reproduction. So uh, in lesson nine here, uh, sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction that involves a complex life cycle. What I would write down here as well is that it involves male and female gametes coming together. Um, sexual reproduction is the most common life cycle in plants, in fungi, uh, in other animals, and it involves a male and a female of the same species. Uh, the male and female reproductive organs are involved. We have fertilization, whether that be external or internal. And I guess the real key is that meiosis must occur to create these gametes. When we're talking about asexual reproduction, we are talking about a process where mitosis is the only thing that is um, uh, needed. In sexual reproduction, the process of meiosis must create those gametes and then the gametes must somehow find each other outside of the body or inside the body, uh, depending on if we're talking about internal or external fertilization. So it is a much more complex process and that's why it is referred to um, as a complex life cycle. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to read the document provided. There's 11 advantages and nine disadvantages of sexual reproduction. And similarly to before, I want you to choose the five biggest advantages and the five uh, biggest disadvantages and explain why you think they are that way. Uh, it's really important for us to be able to differentiate um, between some important uh, factors and some unimportant factors when uh, we're talking about asexual and sexual reproduction. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, and thanks very much for watching everyone. I will see you soon.